praying in tongues. If you'll pray in the Spirit, He will make intercession for you according to the will of God. In other words, you can pray your perfect prayer when you're praying in tongues, when you're praying in the Spirit, because the Holy Spirit makes intercession for you according to God's will. Sometimes I don't know how to pray for somebody, so I pray in tongues for them. Because the Holy Spirit will make intercession according to God's will. Yes. And God knows how to pray. The Holy Spirit knows how to pray things into your life and into the life of others. He knows how to get the job done. Sometimes a, spirit, a heavy spirit of intercession comes over me. I remember one time I was in South Missouri. And the spirit of heaven intercession came over me. Now I knew I was supposed to intercede for somebody, so I started praying in tongues. I started praying in tongues like I never prayed in before. The Holy Spirit was doing that. And I prayed in tongues for about one half hour. As a matter of fact, when I started, the Holy Spirit said, write the time down. So I wrote the time down. And then, then when it lifted, He said, write the time down again. I wrote the time I was driving a truck. So I said, He's one hand. I wrote the time down again. And then later on, I called my wife and I said, did something happen at this time? And it was, what it was, there was this guy, he was dying, the guy who we'd been interceding for, our church had. And the, the thing is, he, his, him and his wife, they didn't want us coming and praying for him or anything. But we'd been believing God for him to be healed. And all the church had. And he, was, and he had died at that moment that the, the Lord had me stop praying. And I said, well, Lord, why did you do that? He said, well, he told me this. He said, because... The devil was trying to get him to turn away from me in his last half in his last half hour. He said, So I needed you to intercede. Mm-hmm. God knows he knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. He needs us to pray so he can move. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because he gave us authority in the earth. He gave mankind authority in the earth, yes. authority and dominion. So he needs us to pray. So he gave us the tools we need to be able to do that. So fortunately, I was able to pray in tongues because the Holy Spirit enabled me to do that. Yeah. And, and God got the job done. The man went to heaven, I believe. Yeah. He was a Christian, and his wife didn't want anything to do with the church. Yeah. So anyhow, when we pray in the Spirit, then God is able to move, and he's able to get things into our lives that we need and to accomplish his good will. Likewise, the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. That literally means with groanings which cannot be uttered by intelligible speech. In other words, you, you don't have the words to say, but you can pray in the Spirit, and the Spirit will, will yes. give the words that God, it comes from God, yes. and God's will will be done. Thank you, Lord. Then the next verse. He that searches the hearts knoweth was the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints, according to the will of God. And then the next verse is the most quoted verse. You know what the most quoted verse used to be in the Bible? John 3.16 was the most quoted. Now this is the most quoted verse in the Bible. It's Romans 8.28. And it says that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Now, what happens when bad things happen to people? They say, well, that must be God's will because, because God let that happen. So that must be God's will. Because the Bible says all, you know, all things work together for good to them who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. But in the Greek, in the Greek interlinear, it says all the things of God. You see, it's talking about God praying things into our lives that we need by the Holy Ghost, and, and all the, it says in the, it says in the Greek, all these things of God. Talk about the things the Holy Spirit is praying into our lives. Our work together for our good, to those of us who love God and are called according to His purpose. God wants to get good things to you. He wants to help you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He means good for you, not evil. Every, and James says, every good and perfect gift, gift comes down from God, from the Father of lights. With whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Only those good things come from God. Every time a good thing happens in my life, I give God glory. I give God praise. Because it comes from Him. Even if it's something that's in my ability. He gave me His ability. 
It's God that gave me the ability. Amen. All right? And we know that all, you know, just think it like this, all the things of God work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Now, God can turn situations around, and what the devil means to, for bad, God can turn that around for your good. Okay. All right? So God can do that. Yeah. But it's not God doing those things. It's not God making those things happen, those evil things. But God can turn the whole situation around. It says that James counted all of joy when you come into all kinds of different troubles, troubles and tribulations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work of patience, and as you allow patience to have its perfect work, then you become perfect in entire. But on later down in that same chapter, it says, When any man's tempted, don't say you're tempted of God. For God can tempt no man with evil. God doesn't do that. The devil does those things. Amen. We have an adversary of the devil, and he goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And just because the devil is, you've allowed the devil to devour you, or the devil is devouring you, doesn't mean that's God. Right. Doesn't mean God has anything to do with it. I mean, God wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted, to give people peace, to deliver them from sin and iniquity, yes, and to heal their body. Yes. He did that through his whole ministry. He healed them all. Yes. Glory to God. That's the kind of God he is. Yes. He's the mighty God. Yes, yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. Verse 29. For whom he did foreknow. Say foreknow. foreknow. Now, God knows stuff. One time I had the Lord say, I don't know why you... I was gripping with the Lord about something. I said, I don't know why you even did that, but why you had to do that, Lord? And after I griped at him for a few minutes, then he spoke to me real clear. And he said this. He said, you just do what I tell you to do because I know stuff you don't know. We need to realize God knows stuff we don't know. Amen. God knows stuff, we, and he really does. Yeah. He knows stuff about people that you don't know. Yeah. He knows what you need to do to reach a person that you don't know. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Why? Because he knows everything. He knows the future. He's on this. That means, he, I guess, what does that mean? He knows everything. He lives out. He does not live in time like we live in time. God can see the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. God knew when he created the earth what would happen. And he foretold the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. His six days of creation represents 6,000 years of man being here on the earth. And the day of rest represents a thousand year millennial reign of us. Of us. Reign, ruling the reign with Christ. And so here God, who he foreknew, those he did for this predestined. In other words, God does things out of pre-knowledge. So I have people all the time, they say, well, before I ever became a Christian, God saved my life. And I said, you know why he did that? They said, no. I said, because he knew you were going to become, you were going to receive that. He knew you were going to become a Christian. And so he does those kind of things out of foreknowledge. You see, God knows stuff we don't know. He knows ahead of time stuff you don't know. And so God, he has a plan, and he has prepared things to get you where you need to get if you're going to serve him, Amen. if you're going to walk with him. Amen. Hallelujah. And so who God foreknew, those he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Yes, Hallelujah. You. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. And whom he called, then he also justified. It's all out of pre knowledge. It's all out of, all out of foreknowledge. I mean, God knows what you're going to do. And so he, he equips you to get you where you need to be. And then he does that for knowledge. One time I had the Lord, I was preaching, I was pastoring a church down in South Missouri that the Lord had me do that. And I wasn't a pastor at that time. I was an evangelist. I said, Lord, I'm not a pastor. He had told, had told me to start this church. Down there, we only had it for one year. And, Lord, and I said, Lord, I don't even know why you got me to do that. Well, there was, two, there was two reasons. There was like two men that were ministers that God wanted to say they're ministers. And one of them, he, he, God told me, have him be your associate pastor. I said, God, he can't even preach. I told the Lord, I said, he can't preach a living. 